Thank you, Ahmedine. Uh, let's go back a bit to our earlier story on the inauguration of the SIS. That's the Special Intervention Squad by the um, Gen uh, Inspector General of Police uh, to help us make better sense of this. We're joined by security analyst Saludin Hashimu. Thank you very much for joining us. What are the potential implications of the uh, police? Let's start with the NLC's um, allegation against the president of financing a terror, the NLC's president, um, Ajero. Let's start with that. What is the potential implication of the police allegation? All right. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I think the very basis to begin this conversation from is uh, with the Terrorism Prevention Act 2022. Uh, that particular uh, piece of legislation, uh, we have raised a lot of concern uh, about uh, the inability of that concern to be able to drive in uh, the expected uh, response uh, that we require uh, to be able to either deter, prevent, or contain uh, terrorism. And the idea behind it is simply put that there are quite a number of provisions that are either ambiguous or some of them are either weaponized and have empowered the state uh, to be able to subdue. And one of the provisions there simply put suggests very clearly that the state in itself has the power to interpret uh, what terrorism and terrorism financing is. And it therefore means that if that is the case, uh, it went further to in other provision to say, look, that such person who has been labeled can therefore either be frozen or the account or liabilities or assets of the person can therefore be frozen or confiscated by the state. And therefore, the process uh, is also suggesting that uh, only the Attorney General of the Federation is also empowered to be able to do otherwise. Now, what does this say? Uh, what it tells us very clearly uh, is that there are quite a number of impunity that will be coming into that particular interpretation. And the second thing, uh, simply put, is that when you have discretionary power uh, for the state to exercise capability and the capacity of the state to complete, then you begin to have some level of undue assault. Uh, okay. Terrorism Prevention Act requires some level of immediate review for purposes of meeting modern and contemporary response uh, to the terrorism that we actually uh, seem to be fighting. What was your quick thought on the inauguration of the special interventions accord by the IGP today? Well, ceremonial, uh, cosmetic, and these are some of the things that we see on a regular basis. Uh, we saw this kind of uh, cosmetic um, uh, intervention squad uh, for school protection. Uh, we saw similar uh, intervention squad uh, for some other uh, response um, uh, situations. And again, I think, again, uh, is that uh, response squad has become quite um, a ceremonial uh, interpretation just to be able to provide uh, credentials uh, for why, those why, who are um, in uh, office. Sorry to interject. Uh, why do you say cosmetic? Way. Why do you say cosmetic? The IGP seems to have a whole lot of portfolio that he intends for them to accomplish in the fight against uh, insecurity and banditry, kidnapping. So why are you calling it cosmetic? Yeah, I mean. I agree with you entirely. I mean, uh, even though the intention seemingly uh, is very correct, uh, but like I said earlier, uh, that uh, when the school safety conversation started, uh, there was this same kind of inauguration. As a matter of fact, I was at the police headquarters the day uh, the response uh, squad uh, for school protection was actually instituted. But you and I also are aware uh, that after that was done, uh, several schools were raided and there were several students who were taking several millions of naira were paid uh, in ransom so exactly what exactly uh, would that suggest so for me again uh, if you do that what you are simply doing uh, is providing some sort of a mechanical approach to this issue and you are not really looking at what are the baselines and what are those uh, depths information or root causes that needed to
very strategic intervention and response to this. But the question remains, how do we do this if we do not take this through? And taking this through means that you have to find operational capabilities. Uh, the police, just like the army, uh, is also flying chopper, is also flying all manner of uh, hardware as a matter of response uh, to insecurity. But the question remains, uh, what are those internal uh, situation that allows them to be able to sustain uh, those capabilities they are putting on the table. And it is always an issue when it comes to policy conversation that it is always uh, not meeting up with the contemporary needs of the people. What are the contemporary needs? Is that we need to find a way to demobilize some of the men that we have attached to VIPs. Every IGP who has come has raised this issue that we have attached more personnel to most of the VIPs other than the ungoverned spaces that we have. But that hasn't been done. And once the uh, fiat uh, and, of course, the directive was given, nobody also responds to it. What exactly do we need? We need to, first of all, demobilize and reduce the number of personnel and the strength that we have attached to VIPs. A right, so a the minimum uh, of 80 uh, uh, the personnel attached to them. Does, and of uh, course, have... we have a number of them who carry wives and carry bags at airports. These are not what policing should Indeed, be. Indeed, this has been condemned across board, of, and uh, the police have severally said that they're working on it. Their work is truly cut out uh, for them. And from what you're saying, they barely scratched the surface. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me.